aujourd'hui, on, on prend Today, we're only taking in some of the victims. The women are getting treatment, but there's also this whole issue with children born of rape. You see, this phenomenon has been going on for more than 10 years. And so we're now seeing children 10, 11 years of age, born of rape, and no one is taking care of them. People are calling these poor kids snake children and whatever. The community doesn't want to take them in, doesn't want to integrate them since they've got no affiliation, and that's a serious issue. And on top of that, try to think of all these kids who have to stand there and watch their mothers suffer harm, suffer rape, suffer mutilation. These children are carrying terrible psychological scars with them, and that's a serious issue. So these children have taken a double blow, as they not only have been raped, but also suffer rejection and stigma. How are you helping them? What awareness raising work do you do to help them deal with stigmatization and with these psychological wounds? We work a lot. We, we have teams working hard within the community. This said, we've realized that we can heal a woman and send her back to her community, but the community is sometimes not ready to welcome her back. It may not understand what has happened, or it may think rejecting the woman is a cleansing act, an act meant to purify the community and the family. So we are working hard to bring families, churches, communities and NGOs together to talk about stigmatization and to shift the stigma, so to speak, from the victims to the perpetrators. And I think people are beginning to act on this, and women are now returning home, but it's a long-term work, and we have to keep at it. I see little 12, 13, 14-year-old girls who have been raped, and I find them in this horrific condition. When they dry up, these little girls no longer get dirty. I always enjoyed seeing them put on makeup and lipstick and start living again. And they often come up to me and ask, Papa, how do you find me? I think it's wonderful. It's childish. But it also shows their will to live, just as it shows how people can destroy the lives of children. The kid's strength to go on living gives me strength to go on taking care of them. It just tells you, it's all good. You have got to keep fighting for life. You have got to keep on giving life. You have got to give hope to others. Nous avons besoin d'abord de votre soutien. First, we need your support since this problem won't be solved in a day. We need the media to stay awake and keep covering this whole story since the more the grassroots demand change, the more likely those at the top are to follow up. But we need to feel some support for what we're doing since, as I was telling you, it's not plausible for us to keep on healing mutilation wounds. We'd rather use this time for treating women who give life, who give birth. We're spending lots of time healing the consequences of human stupidity. We don't like that. So we need to keep the pressure on decision makers so they'll finally take charge and find a solution. Do you need funds? Absolutely. At the moment, we're only treating some 3,600 women a year. We can't treat any more than that. Care, transportation, uh, meals, medical care, taking them back home. We have to offer all of that for free since when they come to see us, these women have next to nothing to live on. And once we're done treating them, we can't just show them out and say, you're healed, you just go home. Often, they don't know where to go, their family may have excluded them. We have a financial support program since when women can take care of themselves, when they're financially independent, they can better defend themselves against sexual aggression. But when we have to take care of 3,600 women, that's a lot for us. Even when we're only giving them microcredits, that's already a lot of money at our level. Merci beaucoup, docteur. Je vous en prie, madame. Merci. Je vous en prie. Merci.